Hi! Last time we were talking about the Light project with app development with Swift, and today we're going to finish the project and complete the rest of uh, this tutorial. So let's go back to Xcode, and where we left off, we have a button, and this button calls an action. The action modifies a variable that says the light is on or the light is off. It's a Boolean. And then we update the UI or the background. We're changing the background color from white to black depending on the value of light on. Let's go ahead and see that in action again in case uh, you didn't see the first video. So here we have a button. If I press the button, hey, look at that. The light is off. And look, the light's on. Off. On. Awesome. All right. Let's go ahead and go back to Xcode and stop. What we want to do now is update the button. Uh, so we want to programmatically reference the button. Now, what we've done is we have, and if you don't see this, if you don't see this view, if you're, if you're in the main storyboard and you don't see the source code view, what I'm using is the assistant editor. And if I click that, it intuitively knows the source code connected to uh, the file that I, and right now I only have one view controller. If I had multiple view controllers, you would see them here, and then you would see them in the project in the hierarchy here. When you select a view controller, it'll select the source code behind it. So we did, in the previous video, create a connection. If you select the button and right click, Notice we have this connection and it says touch up inside and it has view controller button pressed. This is a connection that links this button with this code. So it's calling this action. We want to be able to reference the button so that in code we can change the properties of the button. To do that, you can either um, Control, press Control, click and drag, like we did before. Or you can right click and choose New Referencing Outlet. And I click this. I'm clicking and dragging. I'm holding down the mouse button. And I get the same thing. Notice I have the same ability to uh, insert. So I'm going to insert an outlet. And from here, I'm going to call this Light button. And notice it automatically sets things like the type and everything. So go ahead and click connect. Now I have two things connected. Uh, I close this. Two things connected to the storyboard. I have an IB action and I have an IB outlet. So the question becomes where do we want to update or change um, the button text or button state, like if we want to change the color of the button or any other property. Well, let's put a breakpoint here. And notice that um, if we run the app, let's go ahead and run. So I have a breakpoint on line 17 in my particular version. Yours might be a little different. But I have it right here on this light on method. And I press the button. Now, it immediately takes me to the debug view. And because the debug view is active, now there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in here. We'll look at this a lot as we go through some of these other apps. But for now, understand that what we're doing is we're in the middle of a breakpoint and we've stopped. The code has stopped at this point. Look down here. There's a few buttons that we will become familiar with. This is a great way to uh, debug your application. You can deactivate a breakpoint. The reason you would deactivate is, let's say I had another breakpoint down here. I can even add breakpoints while I'm in this state because I can, I can, I can check and say, well, I want to check if, if it ever lands here or wherever else. If you wanted, if say you had a bunch of break statement, uh, break points here and you got to where you were and you've inspected it and you know what you need and you don't want to see any more, you can click here to disable breakpoints. This button will continue and this will step over 
and this will step into and step out. Step over is a way to go from one line to the next. And if I were to press step over again, it's going to, I won't go into this method. But if I want to see this function, then I would click step into. Now here I have this um, highlighted and I can step over from this point, I can step over and notice what happened. It, it identified the value of light on and it determined, okay, it is false. So now that means the background color should be black. So we, we can see how this code works. Then if we're making a change to the background color, we might as well make a change to the button. So this would be a good place to do it within the update UI method. Let's go ahead and click stop. And let's go back to the main storyboard so that we can see everything here. We want to make changes to the button and in order to do that we need to know what methods there are on the button, the UI button. Remember we've created an outlet and this is of type UI button. There are a couple of ways to get to the documentation and it's important to know that. One way is to go to Window and choose Developer Documentation and this opens a window that you can then have open to see all sorts of things. So if I start filtering and I say UI button, now I can select that and here I have all the documentation for the button. And notice you can select your Swift language or Objective-C. It tells you which um, SDK version it supports. And so you have all sorts of things you can do you can for sure go through that on your own. That's one way to get there. Another way to get there is to right click and, uh, what is it? Sorry, it's, okay. It's command, so I hold command and I click. Notice when I press, I'm holding command and it's giving me options to, it automatically highlights different items. When I have command, I'm holding the command key and I'm mousing over. These are options that I can then click and do something with. If I click that, I can show do show quick help. And then it gives me the button and it gives me a summary of what I can do. And then I can open in the, the documentation that I just had. Another way to look at it in a little more detail is, um, for example, I'm gonna just temporarily show this to you. Um, I have, a, I have a reference to my button, it's called light button. When I press dot, notice then I have a bunch of options for properties and methods available to me. Notice if I scroll down here, I have one called set title. And so I wanna set the title. So if I click that, now I have an option to set the title and for the state. When I look at the state, in order to do that, I can go to the documentation, but the state represents whether the button is selected, whether the button is uh, disabled, and there's one called normal. So here, I'm gonna change the text, and in this case, I'm gonna say off, and then I'm gonna change this for normal, and remember, if I use the dot syntax, it's going to prompt me with the enums for all of the states. So notice um, the autocomplete gives me, I have normal, disabled, focused, highlighted, reserved, selected. I want for normal. Uh, let me move this in the right spot. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna press Control Command X and what I'm doing is I'm changing the text depending on the variable. Well, if light on is true, I'm setting it to white and I'm changing the button text. Well, I want to paste this. I want to change the button text to off, meaning now that the background is white, the light is on, the button should say off. If I paste this 
in the next, in the else statement, and then I change this, well, I want to say on. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Go ahead and run the app. Okay, let's take a look at this. Now, uh, it says button. When I press the button, whoops, <laughs> I had a breakpoint. Uh, let's remove the breakpoint and go ahead and press the continue. Okay, notice it says on. So now I click on, now it says off. And it says on and off and on and off. Okay, very good. Except, notice what happened when we ran this the first time. Go ahead and go back to Xcode and click Stop. One thing you could do, um, if I press, notice what happened, I press the back button. Every, this, this is its own screen, and so it has its own navigation, so I can click back, and it'll take me back to the main dot storyboard. Now, of course, the window isn't selected, but Anyway, there's a, there's a couple of ways you can go back to that. All right. So the problem is, of course, that the button name isn't set the, right the first time. One way to do this is to call the update method as soon as the UI is ready. All When you've created this um, template, we open the single view app template, created a view controller, and in it, there is this view did load. Notice it says, do any additional setup after loading the view, typically from a nib. Well, what is a nib? Well, a nib is a reference to a, an interface builder file. IB for interface builder and N because of, what was it? It's, it's, it's the, the origins of Apple, you know, 25 years ago. And so N stands for next, I believe. Anyway, enough with history lesson. That's what developers would call it, a nib file, which is this storyboard file. We need to call update UI in order to set the button state. Remember, we have a light on variable that we initialize with true. So when we call this, we're gonna say update UI. What happens is, View did load gets called before the visual elements are shown, but after the uh, properties and, and variables are initialized. So let's try it one more time. Notice now it shows properly on, off, on, off. Very good. Let's go back to Xcode and click stop. Okay, we've got this button and it's pretty obvious that um, we, you know, we want to be able to interact with this without having to press this little tiny button. So let's change a few things. First, uh, let's select the button and over in the, it's, what is this? This is the attribute inspector. Um, there's a title and it says button. Let's go ahead and delete that title. Now, because we're deleting the title, let's resize this and make this fill the screen because we want the button to be the entire screen. In order to do that, um, we can add some constraints. And right now I can click and drag and I can you know, set this all the way to the edge. I can click and drag and I can do that now, it fills the screen. Now, what happens though when I switch orientations? Notice that my button, of course, is not matching horizontal orientation, the landscape. So in order to fix that, we need to add some constraints. And the constraints that we want, instead of, you could say horizontally center, but the problem is if you horizontally center a button that is that has an explicit width and height, like if I go back to the inspector and uh, I click my little measurements, the width and height are, you know, only this big. Well, if I'm on an iPad, it's not gonna fill the entire screen. So instead of using um, something like horizontally centered, what I want is to constrain this. So go ahead and select, make sure you've selected the button and I'm gonna add constraints. And notice that 
I, I want to add these all the way around, adding four constraints so it's always to the left, top, and bottom, and right. Go ahead and click Add Four Constraints. Now, when I change the orientation, check it out, it fills the screen. And if I change the device size, the 8 Plus, the XR, 10R, I mean, and then iPad, look at that. It fills the screen. So that's what we want. Um, wait, go back. Oh, here we go. That was interesting. It had a little different view because of size. Let's go back to my iPhone 8. Oh, that's interesting. It has a little different groupings. Fun. Okay. Because we've got rid of the button text, we don't need to update the button text anymore. So go ahead and double, uh, if I triple click, it selects the entire line. Go ahead and delete that. And triple, one, two, three, and delete that. Since I'm not updating the text anymore, I can remove the reference to this light button. If I, first thing I want to do is I want to click and remove this connection. If I, if I want to remove it, I can go here and I, there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, I can right click on the button itself and you have to be careful. If you have a lot of elements on the screen and you right click, you may, you got to make sure you're right clicking the right one, right? Right, right, right. So you can do that or you can select it here and then right click. Now, notice this little X. I want to go ahead and click X and now it's broken. If I go back, notice there's no more connection. So I can safely delete this line and we are good. Okay, let's go ahead and run this and make sure we didn't break anything else. Okay, check it out. It's on, it's off, on, off, on. I can click anywhere, off, on, off, on. Perfect. All right, let's go back. And there's one more little thing that we can do to clean up our code to make it a little more readable. Right now we have an if statement that has um, if the view you know, if it's light on, then change the background color. And this is quite a bit of text and it's a little redundant. One way we can change this is to use what is called a ternary operation. And it's a shorthand that is kind of nice. Um, all the cool kids are doing it. So, you know, it's kind of fun. So what we're doing is um, we are making an assignment and so I can go ahead and I can say view dot background color equals and instead of doing the if statement, I'm using a ternary operation that is basically making an assignment choice in line. And the way to do that is you say if light on and you do a question mark and then you say then after the question mark, then you have the two choices and the two choices are going to be we said was white and then you use a colon, and then the other choice is black. I'm going to delete some of this space here, give myself some room. Okay, what does this mean? We are saying this is a Boolean, and ternary operators work with Booleans, and they work best when you only have the two options, right? So, we're saying if light on is true, then use the first value. If it is false, then use the second value. That's what that means. You may see this in other applications and other code, and that's what that is. All right, let's run this one more time, make sure we didn't break anything, and then we'll see what we've done. On, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on. Check it out. Sweet. Okay. Well, that brings us to the end of this project. We've talked about a lot of different things. You can now create a button. You can create an action. You can create an outlet. You are able to do use breakpoints. We've identified how to use the interface builder um, view to view it on a different device. 
so you can get a relative device size and uh, orientation. We've talked about constraints and we've even talked about ternary operations. All right, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and all that other stuff. And I'll see you in the next video.